So here we go, jumping right into chapter four, expressions and equations. And expressions and equations are used when we talk about algebra. And so we're considered in pre-algebra and we're preparing ourselves for algebra. So here we go. Some of the questions that we have that we want to look at for the chapter are, what are some ways to model real life situations using math? And that's basically like what math is. It's a representation of the world around us. What does it mean to evaluate? How can we use our words to express math? What happens when things are not in balance? And what does inequality look like? So if you notice, these are things that aren't yes or no questions. It's stuff to really show you kind of the depth behind the material that we're learning. And you might not appreciate it as, as much now, but hopefully in a few years you will. So moving on. You've seen these two definitions before, this variable and algebraic expression. I just want to make sure you have it ready for your availability. So a variable is a letter used to represent one or more numbers. So here's just a couple of letters. In elementary school, you were used to, maybe they put a box or a smiley face or a flower or something that was the placeholder for that number. And when we use a variable, we usually use a lowercase to represent a number. If it's an uppercase variable, it actually stands for some type of formula, like area equals base times height, the A would be capitalized. So with these variables, we make what we call algebraic expressions. So the algebraic expression, or some people like to call it a variable expression, I like to say algebraic expression, is an example like N plus 6. So if I was just looking at this and I was like, okay, I have a variable, I have an operation, and I have a number, I can give it this fancy name, because remember, everybody wants a fancy name. It's an algebraic expression. So it's a combination of variables, numbers, and at least one operation. And the operations we're talking about are your add, subtract, multiply, and divide, and maybe even using an exponent. So I have over here a little picture just to remind us that there's three things that you have to have to qualify for an algebraic expression. The other thing I wanted to remind us of, and we know this from doing the fantasy football when we have our expression that we use to put in our passing and our rushing yards and receiving and the penalties and the interceptions and the total points. So you've seen this before. I just want to make sure you have this noted somewhere. So for multiplication, there's different ways I can represent that. So I could say 5, this little dot, x, 5 smacked up against a parenthesis means multiplication. And then 5 right next to the variable is multiplication. It has to be a variable. If it was 5 smacked up against a 4, that's not 5 times 4, that's 54. Okay, so just make sure when you substitute in um, that you don't think it's a 54. So division, again, we've seen this from the beginning of the year when we talked about a fraction is a division, so you don't have to make a decision. We can either write our division this way or this way. I tend to write it as a fraction bar, and I think as you go up in math, you'll see that division is written more like this than it is this way, but it's the same thing. So we have to do something with these expressions, and so I'm hoping that you're pausing the screen, not trying to just write everything down while I'm talking. So pause it, write it down, and then you can listen. So we need to evaluate. So when somebody says to evaluate, you're like, uh, I don't know what to do. Well, Substitute the values for the variable and then simplify. So that's kind of long and I'm like, eh, I want to substitute the values for the variable and then simplify. I just like to say plug and solve. So basically you're going to plug in the number that they tell you and then solve it. 
Now these numbers are made up. So why did they choose y equals 8? Because they like the number 8. You could have picked anything. So it tells us to evaluate y divided by 2 when y equals 8. So all I need to do for this is I substitute in 8. So I just rewrote it. And again, just like our fantasy football, we put in the values that are given. We can also give it a little hug if we want, a little parenthesis. So we don't need to, but you can. 8 divided by 2 is 4. That's it. And then this next one, x squared plus 2, when x equals 4. So I'm going to substitute in. And that's kind of why I put this one in parentheses up here is because when you substitute in, it's a good habit to put a parentheses around it. So 4 to the second power, 4 squared, plus 2. Now, the most common mistake that students make is they'll say this is 8, 4 times 2. If it was 8, it would be 4 times 2. It would look like this. But notice this does not look like this, so it's different. So you have to tell yourself, okay, it can't be 8. I want to make it 8, but it can't be. Okay, 4 squared is the same as 4 times 4 plus 2. And remember, our order of operation tells me I have to do this first. So 4 times 4 is 16. 16 plus 2 is 18. And then you're done. All right, and so these last two examples deal with the expressions that have two different variables. You can technically remember our fantasy football, there's like six variables that we have. So you can have as many as you want in an expression. So I'm going to substitute in, plug and solve. R, they tell me they want it to be 8. So I'm going to plug in 8 plus, and then an S, this is a negative 4. So I'm definitely going to want to give it a parenthesis or give it a little hug. So 8 plus negative 4. So I have 8 girls lined up and 4 guys. So I have 4 girls left over with no one to dance with. If you want to use your scoreboard way, okay, I have 8 positive. I have 4 negative. Oh, so the positive team won, so it's positive. And 8 minus 4 is 4. So then let's take a look at this one. Again, it's multiplication, 8 times 1 half minus 12. That's the first step. Just leave it just like that. But then we have to solve it. Okay, so we plugged it in and then we solve it. So when we multiply a whole number by a fraction, I want this whole number to look like a fraction. So I put it over a 1. This is 8 times 1, which is 8. 1 times 2, which is 2, is 12. Oh, 8 divided by 2, because a fraction is a division. 8 divided by 2 is 4, 4 minus 12. And you're like, uh, we're still having to do with the negative? Yeah, we still have to work with the negatives. So remember, you can use the keep change change, add a line, change the sign. You could visualize it, which is always a good start. So if I was adding a 12, I would go right. But I'm not adding, I'm subtracting. So I'm going to end up going this way. So I know I'm going to end up with a negative answer. So 4 plus the opposite of positive 12 is negative 12. Oh, so who would win the game? The negative team would win. And by how many points? 12 minus 4 is 8. So it would be negative 8. 